Hey, Justin. What's up, man? Are you excited and ready to go for this Spend Your Money on Games episode? I am very excited. I've actually spent quite a bit of time thinking about this. Yeah, me too. Me too. This is either going to be one of our best episodes ever, ever, or it's just going to be just the worst piece of trash we've ever put out. It could go either way. It could go either way. Yeah. It's not going to be a middle of the road. No. Yeah. So uh, here's my thoughts on how to do it. I think Mm -hmm. we both have lists. I have right. uh, probably 10 to 12 games on my list. I How have, many do you have? I have 10 games, and I actually made an honorable honorable mention list. Oh, I didn't think to do that. Of, of six games, and the honorable mention list is going to be games that I had in my list at certain times, but then due to just cost, I had to like... Okay. Shipped them out. All right, so. I can do that. I can do that too. I can do that too, yeah. just from my head, because I I did my I, my final list like an hour ago. So okay, so, so. I, I I can think of my honorable mentions. But anyways, what I thought we would do is uh, maybe you and I will do like a game and discuss why it's on our list, mm-hmm. and then maybe we'll go to the Facebook and talk about somebody else, like read off somebody's list because other right. other people have done lists too. So we'll do, go to a listener list, and then we'll come back to our list and just kind of jump back and forth. Yeah. So just to reiterate what we're doing here for anybody that's not paid, you know, saw the Facebook post or anything. So we, uh, this is our 118th episode. We were done 118 episodes. And so we're taking that amount. So if you had $118 and you took all the games that we've reviewed, just the ones we reviewed and their average price that they're going for on, um, online, uh, what would you buy with $118? Yeah. So, and so I yeah. put together a spreadsheet that where you could pick the games and they would just add them up and mm-hmm. you could see how much, as, as you're picking them, you can see how much it's, how close it's getting to uh, 118. And then when you go over, it turns red. And I, so I put a little bit of time in the spreadsheet, not too much time, you, but you enough did. to where it's. You did. Yes, and thank you for that. Yeah. I wanted everybody to be able to use the same monetary values for the games. So I used the, the day that I made the spreadsheet, I went to price charting and I pulled the loose cart price for all these games and mm-hmm. put them in the spreadsheet. And I released it for everybody to uh, tinker with. And so listeners have put together lists. You and I put together lists. So it could be fun. Should be fun. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Speaking of fun, you know what's fun? What? Running. You were talking to me about the show, yeah. before the show about running. So Yeah, so uh, we decided to save this conversation to the show. So basically, uh, back in about June, I found out I had high cholesterol. It's like, I, you know, and it's completely understandable. I've been studying for exams. It just basically took my last like set of big exams for a little while. And uh, in, back in May... Had my cholesterol checked. It was high. It wasn't like astronomically high, but it was a little high. And so I was like, well, I got to make some changes. I've been sedentary for about three years, you know, and, and just pretty much eating garbage. So I've been changing my diet. Like I've been, food. oh yeah, it's great. <laughs> been running, been doing some running since June. Started off running, incorporating a little biking every now and then. And I get told Mike, I'm get, trying to get about 50 miles a month uh, in running. But, uh, so, you know, about two or three weeks ago, I didn't tell you this part, I started having a little knee pain, some right knee pain. So I was like, well, I'm going to incorporate a little weightlifting, not run as many days, like cut my running down to three days mm-hmm. that a little longer distance and then do like two or three days of, of weights. And we're not talking like I'm not maxing out bench. I'm just, you know, I've got like a du- couple dumbbells and I'm just doing some, you know. A couple 150-pound dumbbells. just Yeah, I just, just, you know, curls. some just some resistance training, you know, with some 150s, you know. Yeah. But, uh, you know. Nothing, so, nothing heavy. So. so I started that probably like two or three weeks ago. And But anyway, I'm just, a, you know, what it looks like to be an almost 33-year-old when you start trying to work out again. I'm sitting here. Uh, with my heating pack, with my <laughs> heating pad right here, it's been on my shoulder. Now it's on my lower back, and in between my knees is an ice pack. Nice. So, <laughs> you know, that's uh, kind of 
the scenario that we're dealing with right now. Uh, I feel your pain. See, <laughs> I, I never, I never really stopped working out. I've slowed down o- over the mm-hmm. years. Mm-hmm. So, like, I used to work out a lot, like a lot, a lot, and mm-hmm. really f- stressed about it, and ran every day, and lifted weights every day, all that stuff. And then I got married, and I stopped doing mm-hmm. all that. But I still, okay. I try to run one or two times a week at least, and then I do like calisthenic type stuff like push-ups sit-up stuff and i've always kind of done that but i've noticed like as i get older it's just even though i i've always done it and i've never really taken a major break other than like vacation stuff it just gets harder and harder to do and i just keep getting fatter and fatter (laughs) your metabolism slows things just yeah it's nothing yeah so I gotta I gotta like watch what I eat more and mm-hmm. and continue to work out and try to work out harder, <laughs> even though working out harder just hurts. <laughs> right, sucks. it's horrible. Right, who it decided is. getting older should be a thing? It's terrible. I tell you what, it just sounds awful. And you know, more props to him. But this doctor that I worked with a couple months ago, he just did an Iron Man. The Iron Man that was in Chattanooga. Nope. No, thank it's just you. Insane. It's insane. Like that's just so much. Like you, you like swim for like I don't know. I think it's like four miles, and then you bike for 112, and then after that, you got to do a marathon, full marathon. <laughs> it's like it's ridiculous. That's yeah. not healthy either. You, him being that a doctor, excessive. We yeah, should I mean, know not to do stuff like that. So that whole you know exercise can be bad for you. I do think is a little overblown. A lot of people panicked and they thought, oh, you shouldn't exercise too much. Look, most likely your exercise regimen is not what they're talking about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're I know talking, I don't exercise too much. Right. They're talking about the guys that are doing triathlons and uh, not triathlons necessarily. Like the sprint triathlons, those are, you know, short and fine. But like the Ironmans, yeah, those or guys marathons are like, even are not probably not. They're not good for you. No. So, maybe half marathon maybe is kind of like the peak, I would think. Yeah. Because was that, 13 miles? Mm-hmm. I'm more of a sprinter. Once I get once I get past three miles, I'm done. I get bored, too. Yeah. You know? I, yeah. I never really ran a whole lot of, like, long distances until recently. And what I've noticed, surprising to me, myself, is, like, the first two miles are a bit of a struggle for me. But then, like, around three... I start feeling like I can go. I can go. It's mm-hmm. like it, it's weird. I'm not happens, a sprinter. That, that happens to everybody because it's like your endorphins kick in and all that stuff. Yeah. And so. your adrenaline gets pumped up because you're getting tired. Well, we should probably Do talk you, about our list. Wait, I got one more thing about running. We can come back. We can come back to running. One more thing. One more thing. Okay. How I Met Your Mother, the episode where Barney says, you don't have to train for a marathon. You just run a marathon. <laughs> And he just runs the marathon, and then he yeah. gets on the subway, and he can't stand up. <laughs> His legs won't work. The funny thing is, he does it though, right? <laughs> right, he does it. So no, I I ran a five k back in the summer. Did not do great, mm-hmm. but uh, you know, as long I feel like if I can run, even at a slow pace, three miles, that's yeah. that's a good health level to try to stay at. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's all about heart rate, too. Like, as long as you're getting your heart rate up to your age minus 220 is your 100%, and you want to get up to 85%. So take your age minus, you know, 220 minus your age times 0.85. That heart rate is what you need to get a good aerobic exercise. Yeah. I have a natural, like, uh, genetics, I guess, or something. I have a naturally really low heart rate. So every yeah, now and you got to factor that in. I just yeah. have to get up and, like, jump around so I don't die. <laughs> like my resting heart rate literally is about 45 beats per minute. It's really, yeah. really low. Yeah. Like I, there was one time I went to the, like when I had my kidney stones back in like two or three years ago, I went to the hospital for the kidney stones and like they were checking my um, blood pressure and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And, and the guy was like, are you okay? You feeling okay? You need, you need some food or a blanket or something. And I was like, eh, I mean, other than the kidney stone, I'm fine. Why? He said, your, your heart rate's like 38. Yeah. <laughs> And I said, oh, yeah, yeah, it's fine. It's always, like, in the 40s. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, some people are just like that. Yeah, Probably the exercise, too, generally. Yeah, maybe, but still, Keep it you. seems really seems really low. 
Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Who knows? I may just, my heart may just stop one day. We'll see. Maybe. Yeah. All right. So you want to talk about this? Let's do our list. After that 10 minute uh, tangent tangent that everybody just decided to turn off the podcast for. Yeah. There was like, well, they said this was maybe going to be the best uh, podcast. And then they just went on a tangent for (laughs) 10 minutes. So when they said it could be the best or the worst, they really meant it was definitely going to be the worst. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So you want to just like do this like game, like, you say one, I say one yeah. kind of deal. And then we'll just, okay, I'll say one and we'll discuss. And then you say one, we'll discuss. All, All right. right. And if, if I say one that's also on your list, then we can just discuss. So I'm going to start off with a, the definitive NES game for me from the beginning of the NES lifespan, Super Mario Brothers. It's still, it's a cheap game. It's $10 and it is <laughs> like, if, when I think of the NES, I think of the original Super Mario Bros. Right. Well, you know, I think whoever got the first, got to announce their first was going to pick that one. So I'm going to go ahead and say that one's on my list. Yeah. And, um, it's, you know, $10. You, I mean, I think easily probably the game that I've played the most on the NES. I mean, you know, the most memories playing, uh, with my dad and all the speed runs and uh even my grandmother played this game a lot you know uh and it was the first you know when when i got a wii and virtual console was available it's the first game i bought so yeah. you this know is, this is the game that i've i have played the most the mm-hmm. game that i have bought the most <laughs> Uh, both physical and digital, I've bought mm-hmm. probably 25 times, literally. Right, right. Uh, this is also the game we've recovered on the show the most. We've covered this game twice on our show. Twice, yeah, <laughs> squared. Yeah. And so, and I've I've beat it. I beat every single level. I beat it speedrun style. I've beat it like twice, where you get to the end, you can start over and beat it again. I, I, mm-hmm. This is the game the faster. Yeah, yeah. So this I, is I, this is the game for me that I just. I can't get enough of. And I know it's not, it's probably not the best Mario game, even on the NES. Yeah. But to me, it's the one that I feel like if, if everything in my entire house burned down, except for my NES, but I didn't have any games, this would probably be the first game I would get. Yeah, definitely. So, definitely me too. Uh, yeah. I feel like we could say a ton of good things about the game, but in order to keep the show rolling, I think we should go to Facebook and pull up a listener list. All right. Let's get that pulled up. Thought I had it pulled up, but I don't. So give me just a second. No problem. We're just, uh, you know, helping out all the two stars, three stars out there. All right. Well, that was, that, that was the uh, 10 minutes of uh, running tangent. talk on the <laughs> fitness fitness talk uh, at the beginning of the podcast i feel like you know the other the other night when we were recording uh spoiler alert because this will actually come out for the patreons before the shadow of the ninja episode will come out mm, yeah unless you watch unless you donate at five dollars or above and you got behind the scenes you can go ahead and listen to shadow of the ninja but go ahead yeah but uh I was, you know, kind of ribbon, uh, um, dude Chewbacca. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's Drew Bacco, by the I, way. I know, I know. Not Chewbacco. I know. I'm just giving him a hard time. <laughs> but I was kind of ribbing him that the Raiders were getting beat pretty bad. Uh huh. And right now, my Bears are getting beat pretty bad. So. By the Packers. I guess, right? Yeah. Two teams yeah. with uniforms that have stood the test of time somehow. Yep, yep. We're not uh, we're not changing them now. Them and the Steelers. Mm-hmm. So, all right. So we'll start off with the first person here, uh, Chris Murray. All right, Chris. Let's see what you got. So he spent his hundred eighteen. He got to a total of one seventeen twenty seven. And he started out with Mega Man 2, Legend of Zelda, DuckTales, Castlevania, TMNT2, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, mm-hmm. 
Uh, Mike Tyson's Punch Out, Little Nemo, and Wizards and Warriors. Oh, it's a nice some high list. dollar games on his list. He yeah, he went more high dollar. Uh, Little Nemo kind of a uh, slipped yeah. in there. Slipped in. It was, I will go ahead and spoiler alert is not on my list and not on my honorable mention yeah. list. But yeah, not mine either. It was not a bad game. No. Jay Jorgensen was on that episode, right? Yeah, he was. That was their Jay, Jay episode. So, uh, yeah, that's a good list. All right. I like that list. Good list, Chris. All right, you got yeah. another uh, You got another game on your list? Yeah. So, I'm going to go uh, this game. This game was not a game I played a whole lot before the podcast, but now uh, I really enjoyed it, really enjoyed the, the game. Uh, that is Batman. Batman. Yeah. Nice. That's on my list too, actually. I hope uh, we don't do this the ent- a whole lot for the entire the whole, episode. <laughs> the whole episode is just us doing the same games. But yeah, I put Batman. This game, the graphics are awesome. The gameplay is just sweet. And Batman is always and still my favorite superhero. The music to this game too was like the kind of music that we always talk about. You could jam to in your car instead of yeah. just playing the game. The music in this game is just amazing. And plus that story that Rob Luther told about Christmas and his dad, or no, yeah. it was his dad, and you know, and my it, <sighs> the tears are just rolling down. Yeah, my face. I don't know, man. That, <laughs> that guy can tell a story. He can okay. tell a story, actually. He's really, I mean, like, he knows how to pace it well, too, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, so, yeah, Batman is definitely on my list, too. Uh, the mechanics of the game are awesome. The uh, the graphics, I, I just love the graphics. Mm-hmm. The, uh, like, like we said, the music is great. It's uh, surprisingly cheap, too. I really, yeah. Which yeah. is easy to put on the list when it's $8. It's one of the cheapest mm-hmm. games on the list, but... Th- it's crazy because this is like one of the this is one of the best Batman games to ever come out on any system. Yeah, until really. You get was. to like the until you get to maybe like the brand new Batman games, the Arkham games because they're pretty yeah. good. But this was up until then. This may have been like the best Batman game I'd ever played. Definitely, um, it's, it really stand, still t- stands the test of time. Now this will be a good opportunity for me to mention one of my honorable mentions, um. Because it plays very similarly to this game, Kabuki Quantum Fighter. I almost mm. wanted to put it on there, but then mm. I, I or I had it on there briefly, and then I looked and I had both Batman and it, and yeah, Batman was cheaper and it was more fun. So I just took out Kabuki Quantum Fighter. But yeah, I really, I still really like Kabuki Quantum Fighter, and it's, it's a good game. It's it's very similar to Batman. Yeah, yeah, that Batman sprite, even though he's purple. I still love it. It's one of my favorite sprites, maybe, and in, in, in uh, one of the best sprites for the NES, in my opinion. And this game has a really good weapon switching mechanic. It, mm-hmm. You know, spoilers again for the Shadow of the Ninja episode if you haven't heard it yet. But one of my biggest complaints about Shadow of the Ninja was you couldn't switch your weapons. You would just get a new weapon and it would take the place of the weapon you got. Well, Batman, right. you get all these weapons and you can just switch between them. Like it's on his utility belt. And it just works perfectly, basically. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've we've already priced ourselves out of two games by having two picks so far. Are that you is, do, are you running the list while we, while we do this? <laughs> no, it just came to my mind. But uh, we've already priced ourselves out of uh, Battletoads versus Double Dragon and Bucky O'Hare. And Swamp Thing, too, I bet. I think Swamp uh, Thing is out, outpriced the second you, the second you try to put it on there, isn't it? Die Hard is one hundred fourteen dollars. Yeah, so there's a few so games. We priced that, ourselves out of there. There's a few games on the list that you basically just can't pick. Yeah, Swamp Swamp Thing's one hundred twenty three fifty, which was like the worst game we've. Ever got. <laughs> yeah, Swamp Thing is pretty bad. It was pretty bad. It was a fun episode though because we had the those comic nerds unite guys on, but. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, Swamp Thing's a bad, bad game. And you know what? I took, after we did the show, I sold my copy of Swamp Thing because I had Swamp Thing. And man, looking at that price now, I really wish I hadn't done that. <laughs> what did you I sell it for? It was like 60 something bucks because that's nah. what it was. At, like, we did that show, what, two, three years ago yeah, almost? It's, it's been a while. And it has, it has basically doubled in price since I sold mm-hmm. it. So, yeah. Uh, I should, I should really learn to hang on to my games, but. Yeah, I didn't figure I was ever going to play it again. Somebody else could get some enjoyment out of it. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. And now somebody else is making my money for me. They probably just resold it, doubled their money. Jerks. Yeah. All so. right. Let's do another one from one of our lists. Okay. Since we've since we've both picked games that were the same, you know what I mean? Yeah. So and yeah. we've only gone two games on our list. So I'm gonna do another one. I'm gonna put on uh let's see. I'm gonna put on Bionic Commando. Oh, that's a good pick. Not yeah. on my list, but good okay, pick. Okay, good. Here we go. Good. Yeah. Now we got some some differences. Okay, so Bionic Commando for me was a game that when I was younger, I it was one of my most frequently rented games. Mm-hmm. And I just loved to play it. It always frustrated me that you couldn't jump when I was a kid. But as yeah. I got older, I realized that that mechanic actually works really well, that you use your grappling hook arm thing. The story is really fun and interesting. It's got some like unique mechanics when you start picking your levels top down and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And I really love the most of the boss fights in this game I love. So for me, Bionic Commando is just... It's not as classic as some of the games we've discussed, but for the price point of eleven dollars, yeah, it was hard for me not to put it on the list because it really fit seamlessly with amongst some of the other games. Right. Yeah, that's a good game. I remember playing it. It's a, it's a real fun game. Uh, so this may be a good opportunity, um, since you don't have it on your list. Why maybe didn't you put this game on your list? Man, you know, honestly, it didn't really even come up. You know, it. Uh, it's, it's not it's, as much exposure to it as me. Probably. Yeah, and it's it's just tough. You know, it's tough to make because you know the reason I the whole reason I made my honorable mention list was just because there was like so many games that I had to leave off that were so good. You know? Yeah. Um. So you know, and and Bionic Commando just just didn't flash out there at me uh probably just because i didn't have the experience like you did yeah i understand yeah. that's cool my heart's only just a little bit broken yeah just a little yeah just a little that's okay so what do you give me one of yours all right i'm gonna pull this one out to, uh this was a game i had never played until we played it for the show and I uh, really loved it for the show. Really got infatuated with it when we talked about it. And that is Rygar. Ah, yes, Rygar. Rygar is only eight bucks, and uh, really enjoyed it. I thought it was, you know, uh, a lot of fun. Um, it was one of those rare instances when you liked top-down stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if so, I recall. Yeah. So I uh, put Rygar on my list. So, um, was that also a Rob Luther pick? No, Rygar was a uh, somebody, uh, somebody. Somebody picked somebody, it. I forgot. Yeah, somebody it. picked it for us, but I don't remember who it was. But Justin thanks you because he liked it. Yeah, I could not. I did. I don't remember exactly what I said about it on the show, but if I wasn't. Um, negative about it on the show then i can be a little negative now because i just it even for eight dollars i just could not find a place for it even in like the 200 if i had 200 dollars, i just i just did not like rygar enough to per, to add it to this list here and amongst the games that we've discussed once i was looking at them all rygar was just it would have been way down there for me i'm sorry yeah no no it's fine i like so. it okay but it's just i like it okay that's kind of the problem yeah, just an okay game for you. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah. Okay, cool. So, you want to go to another listener list? Yeah, we can. Uh, this one would be pretty short because it's just, I think, meant to be funny. <laughs> okay. Um, Jeremy Sharp said, 21 copies of Deadly Towers and we still have money for our Wendy's Frosty. <laughs> And then Chris Murray said, I thought about doing Bucky O'Hare and a spicy chicken sandwich from Wendy's. <laughs> hey, you know what I would probably do instead of uh, Jeremy's list of uh, all those Deadly Towers and Wendy's Frosties? Mm-hmm. Just a bunch of Wendy's Frosties and just don't even buy any games. Yeah, don't buy the games. If your option if you're is a bunch that. of Deadly Towers and a Wendy's Frosty, just go all Frosty. But I'll go ahead and read Jeremy's real list. Okay. Uh, which starts off with Super Mario Brothers. 
Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, Mega Man 2, Contra, Aston Axe, uh, Mike Tyson's Punch Out, Legend of Zelda RC Pro Am for a total of 117.58. There's some real classics on there. Yeah. Yeah. Read his footnote because I, yeah. I need to hear it. I ideally would have Kung Fu replacing Astanax, but it would have put me at 118.44. Mm-hmm. So I also had this problem for a long time, and I told you about this the other night. I did like – for like three – for several picks in a row, I was like within probably 70 cents over 118. <laughs> and it was just like – it was the most frustrating thing. Yeah. Well, so, that's part of the game, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I will say that I know of at least one combination that will get you exactly 118. So that it is possible to get exactly yeah. 118. Yeah. Somebody did, did it, it, didn't they? Oh, I don't know. I know I did it when I was picking through and didn't end up on it. Didn't stick with it. I came really close, actually. My, I'll tell you my total later, but I got close to 118. But Yeah. Douglas Delecky Jr. I won't read his list yet, but he, he hit it on the money. He nailed it. Yeah. So I'll, yeah. I'll be curious to see if his list, because I, I saved the list that got me 118. And uh, yeah. I'll be curious to see if his list is the exact same or if there's multiple lists that can get you 118. Yeah. Cool. All right. You want to do another? Let's see. Your I turn. read first. Or you read. You read first. Well, no, okay. I read. Yeah, yeah, your turn. It's my turn? All right. We're doing snake draft style. Well, in this, in, in that limelight of uh, Jeremy's list, um, and I'm pretty sure you're probably going to have this one on your list too. I'm going to say I had Kung Fu on my list. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know, I got Kung Fu on my list. Yeah. So I Kung Fu. I put it on there twice. <laughs> <laughs> it's Kung Fu comes in. I mean, it's $5 and 85 cents. This is the, almost the main reason that I put Kung Fu on my list. Not only because it was an awesome game that I really enjoy playing, but because when we talk about our games worth it, and there's always like, oh, this game's 15 bucks. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? And I always use Kung Fu as a good example yeah. of like games that are you know cheap that you should go out and buy before you buy it. Kung Fu, Kung Fu, in my opinion, is hands down the greatest value pick that you yeah. can get. On the NES. Definitely. Six bucks, and it is a amazing game. It really is. I mean, and it and really, if you think about it, it's so simple of a game, too. It's really yeah. not, you know, not a whole lot to it, but it's There's just so fun. It. It's so fun. Yeah, it, it, to me, it really never, it just, I don't know, it never gets old. It, it's, it's so simple, and to me, at this point, I've played it so many times that at least getting through it one time is really easy. Mm-hmm. But the game just continually loops, so you can just keep playing through it over yeah. and over again. So I could sit, I can sit and play this game for hours. It's, we, it's just so stupid that I can do that. But I think we did when we were in the dorm several yeah, we times. We probably did. Played it for hours. <laughs> <laughs> Man, we were. We were real winners in college. <laughs> it's like all the time. It's like all the time we just talk about in the podcast. Oh yeah, we used to just play this all the time. Yeah. Play that. It's Remember probably, fl- flaky. probably why I had to do uh, go back and go to back to school again here for yeah, years ago. Right, right. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. So. Oh well, no, I'm totally in agreement with the kung fu pick. It is. Uh, yeah. It hard is, to beat uh, it. It's hard to beat. And I should really be checking off my list because now I'm looking at it and I'm thinking I'm going to get lost here in just a minute. So <laughs> if you don't care, uh, talk a tangent because I'm going to recreate my list so that I can do some checking off. All right. Well, my uh, I would say. Well, are you going to the game this weekend? Is, my, is one question I got for you. Yes, sir. We are going to watch us get demolished by Georgia. No oh, man. This is kind of Butch I think this is gonna be Butch Jones's last stand because my opinion is uh if we lose this game and particularly if we lose it badly, then our players are just gonna give up. You think? Yeah. You know, and then we'll end up losing the South Carolina and we may end up losing the Kentucky. Kentucky's good this year. And I mean, if we play like we did, well, I'll tell you this. If we played like we did against the UMass, we won't win a single SEC game. There's not an no. SEC team that's worse than UMass. So I, I agree. UMass is definitely the worst team we'll play all year. Yeah. And if 
if we play as poorly against them, I mean, as poorly against everybody else if we did UMass, we're just, we're in trouble. Big, 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 big trouble. Yeah. But, eh, we'll see. Usually, Tennessee plays to whatever level of the team that they're facing. So, mm-hmm. it's just kind of our thing. It's what we like to do. So, you, uh, you, the UMass game may not be a very good predictor of our overall season. At least that's what I'm going to continue to tell myself. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we're going to hope. That's right. So... Okay, so then I'm ready to. Uh, list. I'm ready yeah. to go for another game on the list. So this is this is where I want to mention. This is where I'm going to start getting a little controversial here. Okay. Um. I have on my honorable mention list a game that should probably be on everybody's real list, and if it's on your list, you just let me know. But on the honorable mentions list, I put the Legends of Zelda. And then, uh, let me explain myself. Okay. I, as I was making my list, it was on there for almost the entire time I was making my list. Cause I just knew that that was, it's, it's probably one of the top five games on the NES. And I just knew it had to be on there. I just knew it. And as I was making my list, I was making my list. I was looking at it. I was like, God, I need some, I need some space for some more games. What can mm-hmm. I do? And I looked and I had Star Tropics also on my list. Which is a Zelda clone that is not as good as Zelda, but is more than half the price less. And yeah. so I left Star Tropics on and I took off The Legend of Zelda and put it on the honorable mentions list. So Star Tropics is my next game that I'm talking about here. You really like this game. I I'm, remember. I'm a big fan. I've got a, I've got a really solid, uh, heartfelt memory about this game. There was no way I could take it off. This is my personal list, obviously. Obviously, This is not my list I'm necessarily recommending to other people to get. This is, if I had $118, what would I buy? And there's no way I could not buy Star Tropics because yeah. it holds a special place in my heart. It's a really fun game, and I love it. And so there's no way I couldn't buy it. And I was trying to make space. And so I, I dropped The Legend of Zelda and kept Star Tropics well. as its replacement. I remember the episode. I actually had to leave the episode early because I had a prior right, engagement. And I remember the biggest the biggest story from this podcast was the quiz game. It may have been the first quiz game we yeah, ever did. May, yeah, actually, I think it was. And Aaron Stomp, did Aaron Stomp me? No, that was the biggest upset of all time. Because I remember we were talking, I told you like before, I was going to do a quiz game. And you were like, Aaron's going to stomp me because Aaron's like a video game expert. Yeah. And you slipped up and you beat him. Nice. It was the, it was the upset of the century. And uh, it was like UMass coming back <laughs> from, as the underdog <laughs> to win. Exactly. It was it was uh, Rocky Balboa versus, uh, you know, any of the guys. Even that that guy cra- he yeah. faced in the first movie. Drago or Apollo Creed. No, or, wait, he lost to Apollo. <laughs> Never mind. It wasn't Apollo. He lost to Apollo the first time and beat him the second time. Okay. All right. And Actually, then, no, Aaron would be like the Russian guy, probably. Drago. Yeah, he, he would have been Drago because he's supposedly the best, mm-hmm. the most Can't knowledgeable. Beat Can't yeah. beat him. And then here I come, Rocky. Yeah. Getting my brain smashed in the whole time, but <laughs> still somehow pulling it out. <laughs> right. Right. So yeah, th- that was a really good. It was a really good episode too. Even though you had to leave, I hated that you yeah. had to leave. But yeah, uh, Aaron did a. That was before he was a Genesis germ. Yeah, he was just a. He, he was just a. He was just a cool guy back then. Yeah, and he did a good job filling in. He also yeah. loves the game. But yeah, it honestly, I really do think that for the price, this is a, a really good fill in for the Legend of Zelda. Yeah, it's, I think so. Def- I hands down, I agree with anybody who says that the Legend of Zelda is better. Than Star Tropics, but there's just something about Star Tropics, and unfortunately for seven nine nine, you can't get the complete version that has the really cool letter, which was always just blew my mind when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Um, which I still haven't framed it. I've got one to frame. It's never it never even been dipped, and I've held on to it. Yeah, but, uh, I don't know. 
anyway, so yes, uh, there's a lot of nostalgia that goes into that pick, but for seven ninety nine, I feel like you just really can't beat it. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, uh, yeah. Well, you know, Legend of Zelda came up short. It didn't come up on my list either. Oh, <laughs> we just lost all our listeners. Yeah, I was really uh, hoping you'd pull through for me. You know, it, it just didn't didn't come up. Uh, I even thought about Zelda two for a while, which really you imagine they would have burned our house down if we would have left Legend of Zelda one off and put Zelda two up. But uh, you know. Yeah. Um, it didn't may, make it. They may still burn houses down. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't make it in my list um, either. Although it did, it, it was in my thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're in my thoughts. It sounds like a memorial. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but this game was in my uh, picks because it's one of my favorite all time. I got it for Christmas one year. I hope you don't say anticipation. Please don't say anticipation. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> I got it for Christmas one year. Anticipation is on my honorable mention list. Okay. <laughs> but on the real list is DuckTales. Nice. So I had to put DuckTales on there because probably one of my favorite games growing up. Still one of my favorite games. Um Got it for Christmas one year. It was a pretty memorable Christmas. And I, I want to think, like I may have, I don't know that, I want to think maybe I'd gotten this game like really late in the, the NES cycle, uh, life cycle, but still was one of my favorites. The music is great. Um, the storyline is great. The graphics, everything. It's just a great game. So DuckTales uh, comes in. Right. Still, still love that Transylvania uh, um, stage. The music's yeah. great to that, that stage. That's a good. That's a good one. I uh, so. do not have it on my list, but it's definitely on my honorable mentions mm-hmm. because it was on the list before I had to really start paring it down. I agree. I think it's a it's a unique game. It's a unique platformer. Mm-hmm. It's fun. Um, it's got good graphics, it's got good music. There's nothing wrong with it. There's no reason why I shouldn't have it on my list, except for it's just... It, it just, just didn't, didn't make fit. the cut. Yeah. It just didn't make the cut. I will say that a game that we... is not an NES game that I, that we did cover that would have been fun to put on the list just to see what it did if it appeared on anybody's list would have been Shovel Knight because it's yeah. so similar to DuckTales. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would probably... Actually, I don't know if I'd pick... I might even pick it above DuckTales if I had the choice, but... I didn't put it on there. I didn't want to stir the pot too much. But yeah, no, I agree with you. DuckTales definitely belongs on a lot of people's lists. Yeah. If they're yeah. them. Because it's it's a great game, and it's a pretty good price, too. It's not one of the, it's yeah, not one it's, of the super cheap games, but it's it's worth its price. Cheaper than Zelda. <laughs> 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 I'm really going to make some money right now. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> want to do another uh, listener list? Sure. Let's see. We'll pull up... Well, it's Douglas Delakey Jr.'s turn, who did the 118 118. exactly. Yeah. So he starts off with Aston Axe, Batman, Castlevania, Crystallis, Crystallis, depending on if you're north or south of the Great Continental Divide, (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Double Dragon, DuckTales, Faxanadu. Ooh. One of our worst episodes. No, yeah, to, that was uh, bad. Aaron out there, but he had to carry it because we did a terrible job. Yeah, Justin and I did. Ninja I Gaiden. Still feel bad about that one. Yeah, yeah. I don't even want to. Yeah, Ninja Gaiden. He has Legend of Zelda and Life Force. Hmm. Douglas has a really good list there. Yeah. You know, I'm as you know as we look back on our list when we get closer to the end of the show, uh, I've got a couple of realizations I think I'm going to have to make about mine. But, anyways, you know what's we you know it's bad. Neither of us had, uh, neither of us had Legend of Zelda, and every list that we've read so far had Legend of Zelda <laughs> on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I know. Mm-hmm. At least I had a reason for not putting Legend of Zelda on there. You didn't even have an excuse. Hey, 
not in not not yeah. a good one. <laughs> okay. So all right, let's go back to our list then. All right. Let's see. Is it mine? You want me to read one? Uh, yeah, sure. I don't know whose turn it is. Go ahead. All right. So this next one is a is a great game. Just probably my favorite music from the NES, and that is Mega Man Two. Ooh, man, that's a that's a really good one. Yeah, it's a pricey one. It's twenty bucks. So you, it's nineteen ninety nine. Yeah, make that commitment, but. Definitely, it's the cheapest Mega Man game, I believe. Mm, on yeah, yes, but it's also potentially the best. Some it is. Say three, some people say three may be the best, but two's, two's probably my best, two's my favorite. Good. Yeah, and the music is great. And who was it that joined us for that episode? I'm sorry, I'm blanking. Uh, Eric Peterson from uh, Yeah um, Factory Sealed. Yeah, podcast. Yeah, that was a that was a good episode. That was a good episode. He was very knowledgeable about the game. He's he's. Like a, he knows he's a very f- big fan of the game, so knows a lot about Mega Man in general. Yeah, so that was really it was really nice having him on. But yeah, this this game, like I said, favorite music from the NES, and uh, plus it's just a fun Mega Man game. So threw that one on there. Nice. That one was another honorable mention for me because I really wanted to put it on there, um, but when I got to looking at the games that I had on there. I had two or three cheaper side-scrolling shooty type games, mm-hmm. and I just thought I can either drop all three of these other games, or and and get Mega Man on there, or I can just go ahead and drop Mega Man. So I dropped Mega Man. Yeah, uh, I'm not going to say I didn't have a few regrets as I was sure. doing it, but it happened. Right. I will say, I'll just since we're about halfway through my list. I'll just give you kind of a general idea of, of what I think when I'm trying to make my own game list. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I have, I don't want to say that I have true ADD, but I have attention problems Mm -hmm. uh, just in life. It's not ADD. It's just, I like variety way too much food, TV. I can't, I like, I can't watch like three comedy movies in a row. I got to throw a horror in there or something. I can't eat, tacos every night i got every now and then i gotta have a pizza or something you know what i'm saying a meatloaf a, a little meatloaf every now and then <laughs> i hate meatloaf <laughs> really <laughs> yeah i don't like meatloaf at it's all. slowly become like my favorite food really do you like it with ketchup yeah uh, i think that's why i think that's why i don't like it i don't like ketchup no. very much okay anyways uh and so with games i just I can't, other than Kung Fu for some reason. Kung Fu and Mario, I can play for hours on end, but for the most part, I can't play the same mm-hmm. genre of game over and over and over again. So I, I needed a big list with a lot of variety. And in order to do that, I had to sacrifice a lot of my favorite games. Yeah. So you'll uh, notice as we go through my list that I don't have a lot of the staples, the games that everybody loves, including myself. I'm a huge fan of a lot of these games, but for me, and the way I play games, I can't, I can't have those big name games on there because it reduces the number of games that I, ha- the number of options I have, you know? Mm. So well, I'm having to be a value shopper here. And, uh, I'm kind of the opposite. And most of my games are platformers, action games. So that's kind of the two styles that are really uh, all but one. Yeah. You know what uh, you like. There's nothing wrong yeah. with that. It's just, yeah. that's just not who I am. I do. I'm the same with music. Like if you listen to my, uh, shuffled music, you're getting mm-hmm. just everything. Like just because I can't, I, I, I hate hearing like the same stuff over and over again. Speaking of music variety, I had a patient today who uh, was talking about uh, the, uh, we got to talking about music somehow. I asked him something about uh, what's he been listening to lately. And he said, Ricky Skaggs. Nice. And I and I was like, oh, that's good. And he said, yeah, I got to see him in Loudon a few years ago. I was like, I was there. <laughs> I was working the gate. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. That's cool. That was just kind of an odd coincidence there. Yeah. Ricky Skaggs is one that has always made like really great music, mm-hmm. really great bluegrass music, but nobody ever pays attention to him. I don't know why. And he's, and he's a workhorse. That's what I was talking to the patient about. Like, he still tours. He still does, yeah. like, a lot. He's made a ton of albums. He's just, like, 
just constantly making music, constantly working. Yeah, I don't know. I don't get. It. I don't, and I don't listen to him as much as I'd like yeah. to. I mean, yeah. I like him, but I just, I don't know something about him. Maybe it's the last name Skaggs. It's, well, you know, everybody. <laughs> everybody. I guess it's you know maybe it's because of Boz. They don't like it. Boz Skaggs. Yeah, I can't stand Boz Skaggs. So maybe I, I were they related? related or something? Were they related? I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. We need to look that up. I'm hey, I'll tell you somebody I, I, I've been listening to lately, and then all of a sudden I was listening to him because uh, Apple Music recommended him to me, and then I heard him on the Adam Carolla podcast, and I'd love to hear him more, is Willie Nelson's son. Have you heard? Uh-huh. Have you heard I heard him on the uh, Adam Carolla podcast. And yeah, it it's like he's, been sh- he's being shoved in my face all of a sudden. I don't know why, but like Apple Music about a week and a half ago uh, started shoving him at me, and then Adam Carolla is shoving him at me, and... He just all of a sudden popped up on my radar, but he's pretty good. I like it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, let's yeah, bring he, it back to our list. Yeah. All so right. I need to give you one, right? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. I, we were talking about how I make value. I'm, I'm looking for value propositions here, right? And variety. So mm-hmm. I put a racing game on here. The cheapest game, I think, on the entire list, but... One of the most fun racing games on the NES, RC Pro-Am. Yeah, I had it on my list for a second, and then it didn't make it. It's a good game. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun, and man, I I wasn't going to put it on the list, right? It Mm -hmm. actually was not even on my list when I started deleting games off. Mm -hmm. But I got to the point where I deleted one off, and I was left with... This would be a good time to tell you how much my total price is, too. But I was left with like $114 or something. I said, oh, crap. What can I put on? No, it's hundred. Whatever it is that, you know, that, that got me up to it, but it was like one hundred thirteen and some change. I was like, "Oh man, I need to either rearrange my entire list or find an awesome game for like five dollars." Yeah, and I scrolled down. I was like, "Ooh, RC Program! I love that game." So I put it on there, and I ended up at seven one seventeen ninety eight. So I was two Ooh. cents away from one eighteen, and it was just a perfect situation where I was looking for that five dollar game and i was like oh i love rc pro and i put it on there and then the, it calculated and i was like oh that's it my list is done perfect so, nailed it but rc pro am is somewhat difficult for me i'm not really good at it but it's yeah. just a ton of fun the the cutesy graphics are really are really cool it's like a car combat game where you can you know attack <laughs> your opponents and it's remote control cars yeah and it's really fast and it's got a really cool like a three quarter camera angle on it. Mm-hmm. It's basically the precursor to Rock and Roll Racing, which was one of my favorite games when I was younger. Speaking of remote control cars, got a little tangent. When I was in Winston Salem, North Carolina, last month, um, there was a there was a park that a mountain bike trail that I was going mountain biking on. But this park was called Hobby Park. Mm-hmm. And it was like awesome if you like remote control stuff because it had a runway for remote control airplanes, oh, a drag strip for remote control cars, round round uh, uh, race tracks for remote control cars, and a dirt track with like tons of jumps for remote control cars. Nice, it was an awesome park. That's so, really cool. Yeah. Crabman's got a remote control uh, monster truck. Yeah, like so one of the real I. ones. Like, yeah, yeah, you do Mine's, too. Yeah, sure. Yeah, mine's pretty old. I've had it for a long time. He's had got it when I was in, a, in high school. So, is yours gas or electric? It's electric. Okay. Is his gas or electric? No, his is electric too. I wonder if I he, we somebody, might have the same one. Maybe I knew somebody that had a gas powered one. I thought that was a little ridiculous, but yeah, it was really, really, really fast. Yeah. So. But anyways, you get you and Crabman need to find a track and race each other. I know we do. But I got to buy a new remote. I tried to get it out the other day, actually, and my remote's dead, so I got to get a new one. But yeah. can you just change the batteries? I did. It's the remote's just dead. It won't uh, won't turn on with good batteries either. So. That sucks. <clears throat> yeah. All right. So I'm going to bring us back to my list, and this game is it's a it's a pretty pricey one, and just couldn't leave it off for me. And that's Metroid. Mm. So that's a good one. One of my favorites. One of the best. You like you just really like drawing maps. 
Yeah, I love draw maps. But graphically, this is one of the better games. I mean, one of the best games, I think, for the NES. One of the really early games, too. Yeah. Sad. And I really love the twist of the fact that it's a girl at the end. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Been playing as a girl the whole time. It's just like an M. Night Shyamalan movie. Yeah. It just throws you <laughs> off right there at the end, so... That was good. Uh, it was a actually it was a really good episode too. We had uh, Matt Rathel of uh, mm-hmm. Hive Jump, the developers for Hive. He was one of the developers for Hive Jump. Yeah, so yeah. That was a really cool episode to have him on. Yeah. So promoting both promoting Hive Jump and uh, talking about that game. We need to get him on Metroid. again too if we can. Um. Yeah. No, I agree. Metroid's good. I just for me, Metroid. I love Metroid as a series, but mm-hmm. the NES version. It's just hard for me to go back and play these days, mainly just because of the map system. Yeah. There is none. You know, there is no map. You have to draw out your own. Yeah. And it's just, it's a little bit grating on me these days. But nowadays you get the internet. You can just pull yeah, up other people's I know. maps. I, hate, I just hate using the internet. But yeah. I, <laughs> you, know, you, hate. <laughs> you hate using the internet? I hate using the internet. I'm using it right now and I hate it. <laughs> I hate my life right now. <laughs> No. So yeah, okay. All yeah, right. but no, I good pick, good pick. No. Okay. All right. Another one from me. I'm gonna go with Bubble Bobble. Ooh, this one was almost on my list. The death of Soundboard Mario. Right, that was a good this, episode. This is also turning into just like an episode flashback, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That's fine. That's good. Yeah, but yeah. Bubble Bobble, here's how you know it's here's how I know Bubble Bobble is just a solid fun game. When I say, Hey wifey, come in here and play this game with me and within three minutes she's not just like throwing the controller and be like, You're stupid, Michael. This is this game sucks. I'm out of here. Because <laughs> she does that with every game. <laughs> right. But instead she sat there and we played it and we played it and we played it. It is the perfect co op game yeah and it's a game that you don't have to be a really good you don't even really have to be good at video games to play you just no. pick it up play it that's that's just it my wife never she never ever plays video mm-hmm. games but yeah. we had a ton of fun playing both level because it's just it's a fun game it has challenge to it once you get in the later levels but you also don't have to i mean if you don't make it that far it's fine you're just having a good time it's a good game to uh, have some adult beverages too while you play. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's a game that me and the neighbor kid and I played over and over and over again. I played it so much when I was younger. It's just I can't say enough good things about Bubble Bobble. It is a is one of the more expensive games on my list at fifteen dollars, but uh, well worth every bit of that fifteen dollars. I think I guess the fifteen dollars was the breaking point for me because I had it on my list. It was a game I rented all the time uh, when I was a kid, but uh, it just didn't make it for me. But good pick. Definitely good pick. So, okay. And poor soundboard Mario. I uh, know. It was a very memorable episode mm-hmm. for our show, The Death yeah. of Soundboard Mario. Many, many listeners, I think, rejoiced, but... <laughs> well, I know it was, was it Dude Jay that just could not stand <laughs> Mario. Yeah. He was so happy. I don't even know if he listened to our show anymore because I haven't heard from him in a while. But yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, that's uh, weird. People come and they go. You know what are you gonna do? They get busy. They get busy. I understand. I've I've done that to many podcast podcasts where I'll listen to them for a little while and then mm-hmm. I, I get busy and I get so far behind and I just so I just unsubscribe and then I come back later. Yeah. That's no problem. And some some podcasts I listen to until I realize, oh wait, these guys are jerks, like the Genesis Gems, and I just yeah, give up. Quit, quit listening to them. Yeah, yeah. All right. Do we have any more listener? We list? we only have one more. Okay, I have. Let me see how many more games I have on my list. No, we have two more. We have two more. Okay, I have on my list remaining. I have one, two, three, four, five games left. Hmm. So we could do, one. I could do a couple more, and then I could do one more, we do a listener, and then do a couple more, and then do a listener. I only have three out. left, so. Okay, so you, I'll do, I'll do one, then you do one, then we'll do a listener, okay? Okay. All right, another one for me is Life Force. Good game. I like Life Force a lot. Uh, 
I feel like I didn't glow enough about it when we actually covered it on the show, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. looking back and playing it more, because I've played it more since we did the show, uh, it's just a, it's just a really fun shoot 'em up. And I right. didn't have any shoot 'em ups on the list. It's a genre of game that I like. This is a co another two player co op game. It's got that Konami music in it. Um, it's just it's good. It's just a really good game. It this is probably one of the ones that I almost bumped off the list. Yeah. Um, and but again, I go back to I need variety on my um, in my game library. And if this is the only library I've got to work with, I need a, I need a shmup. Yeah, it's a good game, and it's a game that then not a lot of the listeners. I don't think any of the listeners had this game, um, but it's a, it's a great game. I think Doug just did, actually. Maybe he did. Did Maybe he? Not. I thought he did. But anyways, Maybe. of all the shmups yes, that did. we covered, of all the, the of all the shmups that we covered on the show, this was my favorite. There were others. I think Legendary Wings and Dino Ricky, and there were some other ones. Mm-hmm. But this one was my favorite, and it fit the bill price wise. It made yeah. it to my list. All right. It's a good pick. Great pick. All right. So next, so I've only got three left. Um, my next one, I felt like this would be on your list, so I'm not going to be surprised if you also had this one. Ninja Gaiden. Oh, yeah. That's on there. Yeah. So you had to go with Ninja Gaiden, and really it's not bad price, Eleven fifty. It's one of the most fast-paced, fun games that you can get on the NES. So, period. And it's about ninjas. Come on. <laughs> right? It's it's ninjas, and it's fast, and it's got really cool cutscenes and a story. It's got great music. The controls are just extremely precise. Like, every button press is, is exactly what you need yes. it to be. Yeah, that's what that's, that's when the game is like fast paced and difficult, like Ninja Gaiden, it really mm-hmm. has to have precise controls. And this game takes the cake when it comes to precise controls. Yeah. Uh, you can do wall jumping. That's always fun, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And if you're talking about ninja games, spoiler alert, ninja games that have been talked about on the two dudes in a nest podcast. This is the superior one. Oh no, dude! Drew Backo is gonna kill you. It's cheaper. <laughs> it's anyway. way cheaper. <laughs> yeah. It's not two player though. Yeah, that's true. So you can't get two player out of Ninja Gaiden. But I don't. Just I, I'm totally with you. I, it's on my list. It is. I, it's my favorite Ninja Gaiden, but it arguably may not be the best. I could see how people would like uh, two or three better, but. Um, it is definitely, I'm losing my voice. I'm sorry. I may have to stop and take a drink. Why don't you talk about Ninja Gaiden for a second? <laughs> yeah. And then you got, you know, you get the added, uh, uh, aspect of having football players coming at you at a certain point in the game, which is pretty oh, yeah. sweet. Just, you know, that is, that's pretty sweet. Football players coming at you for, as a ninja, but, uh, yeah. It's got the notorious knockback that every time you get hit by one of those stupid birds, it knocks you <laughs> yeah. into a hole. <laughs> yeah. Because somehow the game knows exactly how far back your guy mm-hmm. needs to fly to fall into the hole. And you do. And you always do. <laughs> so. But no, I'm, I'm with you. This is, I think mechanically, this may be the best, or at least my favorite side yeah. scroller on the NES. Definitely. As far as the mechanics of how the game plays, it's just so smooth. Yeah. So I'm with you. That's definitely that was definitely on my list. Yeah. All right, let's do Timmy Mac's list. All right. So Timmy Mac comes with DuckTales, Rescue Rangers, good game, Ooh. Kung Fu, Super Mario Brothers, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Two, Super Dodgeball. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. That, that one, dude. Wow, that was a lot of fun. Actually. It is a game. It's a good game. Star Tropics. So you put Star Tropics on there for you. Astanax, Bubble Bobble, and Legend of Zelda. Nobody's nice gonna list. nobody's leaving Legend of Zelda. <laughs> no. <laughs> Except for us. Except for us. <laughs> oh, they're gonna hit us so bad. Yeah. So. I'm gonna get so many three and two star reviews. Maybe in a couple one star reviews. Yeah, yeah. Um uh, Dave, that super dodgeball. I I feel like I should have put it on there, but I just didn't have any room. But it is I, I'm sitting here talking about how I like variety. That is the most unique game. It is a very maybe on the game. entire system. 
And I mean, USA, USA. You get yeah. to play as USA. Right. I think it's like Russia. So. Uh huh. And whenever you discuss like the history of the game, you get to say Kenya Keen. Because <laughs> it's the Kenya Keen series. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I'm, I'm really surprised, and I'm, I may get some hate mail for this, but I'm really surprised so many people have Astonax on their I know. List. I was kind of not a, sleeper. a huge fan of that game, I don't think. Was yeah. it? I mean, I think I was really nice about it because we had Dude Greg on the show, and I like Dude Greg, but in hindsight, it's not one of my favorite games. Here's what I think. I think Dude Greg sold a lot of people on it. He may have. He can he talk have. a good game. So... Uh, May That's may true. Have sold a lot of people on. That's true. He may have sold people on because anytime he uh, gives us feedback for the show, it's always like the best, most well. It's like the pro- it's like professional feedback. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> so maybe that's what it is. Yeah. He sold them. So. But yeah, it's good picks. We did good have picks. Duke Greg on that show, right? I think so. Or did he just ask us to cover it and he wouldn't come on with us? I don't remember. He was on the show. Okay, okay. I yeah, thought so. He was on it's been a long time since we did that episode. I'm pretty sure he yeah. was. Yeah, he was there. I was going to feel like a really stupid head if I if he wasn't here. I said, oh, yeah, we, we had a good time with Greg. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. You go ahead and give another one since you've got okay, – you should have I'm three left now, right? Uh, yes, I do have three left. Yeah. Okay. Um, this one, I've not heard it on anybody's list yet. And – uh it may be because it's not really that great of a game, but I'm going to put the original TMNT mm. on, on my list over TMNT 2. Made my honorable mention. Okay, good. I was, I was about to say, because nobody's putting it on their list, and you haven't said anything about it, and so I'm sitting here thinking, maybe I'm just an idiot. But I really like the original TMNT. I it- love the character swapping mechanic where you just swap out your Ninja Turtles. You, you play as all four Ninja Turtles, mm-hmm. which if you're going to do a single player Ninja Turtle game, that's the best way to do it. Play as all four, right? I don't want right. to choose. I want to be them all. Right. That was one of my, that's one of my biggest complaints about Team NT2 on the NES. I have to pick which turtle I want to be. I mean, sure, Leonardo is my favorite, but I want to play as all of them. Yeah. Yeah. I it's, agree. It's, the problem is it's an incredibly difficult game. Uh, it's a little bit obtuse in the way that the game works. Like mm-hmm. as far as the top down parts are a little confusing and maze like. But I think the music is amazing in the game. I think the graphics are really good. The, I mean, the Ninja Turtles are huge for, and that's, yeah. a, that's kind of a rarity in, on, in the NES age if to have big character sprites. Um, so I don't know. I, I, it is probably, I don't know that it's my favorite, favorite. Turtle game on the NES because we haven't talked about three yet, but I just really, really love this game and I played it. It was one of the first games I ever had on the system. I got it as soon as it came out because my parents knew I loved Ninja Turtles. The second it was out, uh, it was also in my NES. And so I played it forever and I don't know why I has so much trouble with the damn level. It yeah. really, it really doesn't bother me, but so yeah. anyways, so, I, love, I just love the game. So I had it on my list. I was going to pick it. But, and this will lead me into my next pick. Okay. Uh, I couldn't have two turtle games on there. Uh, I had Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2. And just because, man, I I just love that arcade Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It was just so awesome to me as a kid. I loved it. Because I remember playing the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles arcade game. Yeah. When I actually could play that at home, that was just super sweet. And, uh... I feel like also the, the the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle 2 was easier to play, no doubt, because it was just an easier game. And what I liked about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 was the cartoony feel. So it was really like the cartoon more than the original, which was kind of kind of almost dark in a way, you know. Yeah. But I will say this. One, one way... Uh, there is more to the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and the music is better on the on the first one than the second one. Way better. Okay. So I would have to agree with you. Here's the thing, okay? And mm-hmm. um, when I was younger, of course, I told this story on the podcast, but I didn't have TMNT two when mm-hmm. I was younger, so I did not get that co-op 
two player experience that I probably should have had as a kid that probably most people had. And it's probably the reason it's on a lot of people's list. I didn't get that experience as a kid. I got it as an adult, but as an adult, I liked the original better, yeah. both because of nostalgia and because of the more serious aspect and because of the difficulty. I like the difficulty of it. So, mm, you know, we haven't talked about TMNT three, which is the one I actually did have when I was a kid. So I can't add that one to my list, even if I wanted to. So, well, you know, and, uh, I'll tell you what music I really liked on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 1 was the like when you get like the boss um and it always reminds me of the chainsaw guy it's like you just got the chainsaw guy um mm-hmm. uh the music to that to those bosses was, was awesome but anyway no I'm with you uh but I I cannot fault a single person for having uh, turtles 2 on there because I mean, Turtles 2, basically, if Turtles 1 is the game that Konami originally made, or I guess it was Ultra or whatever, Konami's partner company or mm. whatever that is. Um, if if that's the game that they made and then everybody played and said, oh, we want this and this and this and this, mm-hmm. Turtles 2 is basically Konami giving you everything you probably wanted in Turtles sure. 1. Sure, right. So it's, it's great. I don't blame you one yeah. bit. I think it's good. Plus, you got a Pizza Hut coupon with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles too. That's true. I had Pizza Hut tonight for supper, actually. Mm, yeah. Use the coupon. I Saved it all this time. <laughs> uh, Did not use the coupon. Well, I'm going to use that as a segue to our next listener list. All right. Ivan Kaproth Jocelyn agreed with you. He has Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 1 on his all list. All right. Good, good segue. Thanks, yeah. He also has Castlevania, Double Dragon, DuckTales, Kung Fu, Legend of Zelda, Mega Man 2, Ninja Gaiden, and Super Mario Brothers. Hmm. I may be jealous of Ivan's list. His Ivan's list got a good <laughs> list. He really has a good list. So There's not a lot of people putting Mario games on their list. No. There's, and it's probably because we haven't talked about Mario 3 yet, but I'm not seeing a lot of Mario. Yeah, I think if we'd talked about Mario 3, it'd been on everybody's list. <laughs> yeah, that would be the one that would be on everybody's list. Yeah. Like Zelda's probably should be on everybody's list because it's just not on Except, yeah. Right. Yeah. Although, we, that is the podcast that we talk the most glowingly about a game is the Zelda one. It really is. So that yeah. podcast should tell the tell the story of whether or not we like Zelda. Right. But, yeah, what are you going to do? Yeah. Now, Ivan brings up another good point, and it'll br- I'll bring up an honorable mention. This may be my last honorable mention, actually. Actually, no, I got two more honorable mentions. This one and another. So, Castlevania. Mm. I really, really felt like I needed a Castlevania game on the list. Mm-hmm. But I really wanted Castlevania 3 because that one is my favorite Castlevania, and I think it's way better than one. But it's so darn expensive. Mm-hmm. And so since I couldn't have three, I got so frustrated. I said, that's it. I'm not putting a single Castlevania game on this list. I've already got Ninja Gaiden and a bunch of other side scrollers. Castlevanias are out. I don't want them. All right. <laughs> if I can't have three, I can't have nothing. So why don't but, you get, so you should have two left now. Why don't you give us one of your lists? One of them. Well, we're out of people, right? Right. We don't have any more. <laughs> so I'll just give you the last two then. All right, I put Shadowgate on there. It's a good game. Mm -hmm. I put Shadowgate on there because originally uh, I wanted to put Maniac Mansion on the list. Because I like the puzzly aspect. I wanted a puzzly type game on my list. Mm -hmm. And Maniac Mansion is probably my favorite adventure puzzle game on the NES. But I couldn't make it fit with with the pricing structure that we have. Yeah. So I couldn't make it fit... Oh, hello, train. Yeah. Train doesn't like games. it. Train doesn't like it. He's bringing me my games. Yeah. Uh, so I put I put Shadowgate on there. And when I was a kid, I rented Shadowgate a lot, and I hated it. I don't know why I rented it so much. I hated it. I could never figure anything out. As an adult, I played it, and I couldn't figure anything out. <laughs> <laughs> so, and this is the one, I just got through saying I hate the internet, but this is the one game where I really fell in love with this game by playing it with the internet. Yeah. Like I played it using the guide on the internet and just 
love all the little tricks and and um just all the little nuance in the game itself through cheating basically yeah, but it just it really made the game for me i really i really liked it and then it's cheap so seven dollars and fifty cents it really it, it fit the budget and this is the only way i was really going to get a good puzzly type game i contemplated taking two games off so that i could get um maniac mansion on there instead mm. but ultimately i decided against it all right. Well, I'm gonna leads me to my last game, and I think this is gonna be a controversial pick because nobody's had it on their list, and I don't think you're gonna have it on your list. Uh, but for me, it was this, maybe nostalgia. It was, but it was a game I played a lot. I had a lot of fun playing with it. I really enjoyed the Zapper. Zapper? And I'm rounding out with Duck Hunt. Oh, no. <laughs> yep, so weird. I'm rounding out with Duck Hunt. I know. I know. Like I said, it's going to be controversial. <laughs> it's going to be a controversial pick. How much was that game anyways? 97 cents? $6.11. <laughs> oh, wow. That stinks. I must have done the uh, the non-combo right. with Mario version. Right. Yeah. right. So, uh, but I brought it out because I just really like the game. I think it's a fun game. Uh, I played it a lot growing up and uh just wanted to throw that in there um that's one of my picks so the problem with that that pick not not to try to throw uh salt in your face or whatever the phrase is mm-hmm. but in order to buy that game and play it and enjoy it now you have to have a crt tv yes you can't plug it into like a flat panel tv because you can't use the zapper mm-hmm. um but I, I no. will agree with you that I've had a lot of fun with that game over the years, especially when I was younger. I just haven't been able to play it. Some people may call that cheating because it technically is part of Mario. And I guess, you know. Yes, but when we covered those games, we covered them as the Separate single card games. versions. That's right. That's right. So. so that is my list. And I came in at 116.68. Oh, got some change left. Yeah, yeah. You could air up your tires and maybe get a Coke. Yep, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a weird combo of things to get. Oh, I'm just thinking you're at a gas station. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So what's your right, so I've got, you're fine. I got one game left, but I want to do a quick honorable mention. Uh, Paperboy. I really wanted to put Paperboy on there, but I just couldn't make it work. Yeah. Price-wise, because it is, for some reason, like $13. I don't know why. So I can get Paperboy to work, um, mainly because I got really dehydrated and dizzy and stuff. Yeah. Because I went on that run. Yeah. And I, I really feel like I should have put Paperboy on there, but I yeah. couldn't do it. All right. Um, so my last pick, and this is one of my favorite games, if not my favorite game on the NES. And I don't know if we've given it enough praise. I'd like to revisit it in a different form one day, but Mike Tyson's Punch Out. I just yeah. absolutely love this game. I have played it. It's a great game. Next to Mario, this may be my second most played game on the NES. Yeah. It's so it's fun. Just, you can just sit down and pop it in and play it. It yeah, right. That's that's the thing about it. You could just pop it in and play. You could play for as long as you want, you can play for as short as you want. You can just it just pop it in and play. It's like the original rhythm game. Well, not maybe yeah. not the original, but it is basically a rhythm game because you're mm-hmm. you got to chuck and jive and dodge punches and stuff. It's just there's there, it does not get better t- for me than Mike Tyson Punch Out. Yeah, and it's it, not. I understand it could be a little bit of a controversial pick because it's not the most technical game on the nes sure but and it's not it's not very deep it's really a pretty shallow game yeah as but, far as uh you know length of games concerned stuff carl winslow that's right carl winslow speaking of carl winslow do you have hulu yeah because tomorrow as we record this september 29th 
Hulu is releasing Full House, Family Matters, Step by Step, and Hanging with Mr. Mr. Cooper. The complete so basically series. just TGIF? The TGIF, yeah, without Boy Meets World. Nice. On Friday, too. Yeah. Yeah. How about that? So. So. Well. Punch Out. Here's the thing about Punch Out, okay? Well, yeah. I'm not done with Punch Out. No. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. So we had a couple people mention in the group that they would love to put Punch Out on there, but they just could not see themselves getting the Mike Tyson version because it costs more. Mm-hmm. They could have fit it if we would have done the non-Mike Tyson version. So, yeah. unfortunately, we covered the Mike Tyson's version on the show, so I left it as Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. I wouldn't mind revisiting this game one day as the Mr. Dream version of Punch-Out, just so I could talk about it again, but... <laughs> right. You know, there's the, just the the, char- the uniqueness of all the characters, the, the subtle racism in the game. <laughs> but, <laughs> You, I you can't, like the course. subtle racism? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm joking, it's, but it, you know, it's just a, the, the way that they characterize all your enemies and they all have unique things about them that you have to learn. The difficulty curve is pretty good too. I mean, the, it spikes a little bit near the end, but again, it's just, it's a game that I've only beat maybe once because it was just so hard to beat Mike Tyson. Mm hmm. Yeah, it really is. Uh, and I had it on my honorable mention. I um, wanted to put it in, had it in, in different scenarios, but uh, it uh, came in on my honorable mention because it's just so fun. And it's just, yeah. it's one of the games that you just, it's and the game that you think about when you think Nintendo. Mm-hmm. Kind of like Legend of Zelda, which we <laughs> left off. <laughs> it's one of those games like Legend of Zelda, which you should put on your list that we just did not. Yeah. And actually, I could have probably fit Legend of Zelda on there if I wouldn't have put Mike Tyson's punch out on there. Right. But if I honestly, if I'm sitting down to play Nintendo in my hectic life these days, I'm more likely to put punch out in than I am to put in Legend of Zelda just because of the ease of play, of slipping it in and, and playing it. Yeah. So Mike Tyson's punch out for me is it's going to be my last one. Yeah. So on that note, you know, Mike Tyson was on my honorable mention. So I kind of go through my honorable mentions. Uh, I talked about, I had anticipation on my honorable mention. Did put it on my list. I just, I somehow I just knew you were going to slip that. And one it was going to be so controversial. <laughs> yeah. So I left it off. Legend of Zelda. Also my honorable mention. The uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles I talked about the honorable mentions. Two, three games that we have not talked about, but definitely came in on my honorable mention. One, Double Dragon. Oh man! Okay, yeah, I know. It's so Double Dragon is a f- really fun game. It's where Tom Arnold would be impressed came from on this podcast. Oh, that's true. It's like a Boy, third that's podcast of history right there. Yeah, and uh, it was a, it was number three, I think, right? Yeah, uh, third podcast. Yeah, so um, that had to be kind of brought up in some fashion. Uh, another honorable mention for me was Contra. Oh, yeah. Contra is such a good game, but it's like $30, so it was hard oh, to put on um, I Contra was definitely on my honorable mention, too, but it's just, it's just too expensive. Yeah, and uh, my last honorable mention... Tech Mobile. You know, I had it on my list for a little while too, but then I, because I wanted a sports game, and then I just kind of decided that Mike Tyson would have to suffice yeah. for a sports game, so I got rid of Tech Mobile. But Tech Mobile is a really, Tech Mobile is a game that um, is a lot of fun when you can get some people over and have like a tournament. Yeah. Because it is a really fun two player game. Yeah, it really is. And, you know, I did, I did this wasn't on my honorable mention list but i was sitting here looking at this list and i thought one game that i'd like to have added just because of the podcast uh, episode a boy and his blob would have been nice <laughs> yeah if we were talking about best episodes boy and his blob <laughs> would be up there yeah i mean when you get the the creator of the game on the show and it's somebody like david crane that you can get on the show who just enjoys talking about it 
Yeah, he just loves talking about his game. You know, mm-hmm. talks to a couple of schmucks like us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just because he likes talking about it. Right. So. Uh, um. Yeah. Now I will say that uh, I've got a. I'm sorry. I'm just like waving around like an yeah. idiot. I've got a bug flying around my face. But I will say that I don't think we'll ever get anybody else on the show like David Crane. So mm-hmm. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I think everybody else realized after we interviewed David Crane that we have no idea what we're doing. <laughs> Uh, because I've actually ha- I've actually reached out to some more American developers because there's not very many, right? And a lot of them have actually responded to me and said, you know, no. So, <laughs> so they're in the yeah, same we, boat as Carl. Yeah. So what are you gonna do? There were there were a couple of them flirted with the idea, mm-hmm. and even gave me some like insight that we can use when we talk about the game, like giving me like some stories and stuff. That we yeah. and I asked him. I said, "Can we use it on the show? Since you're not going to be on here, he said, "Yeah, you can. You can use it, but I don't want to be on your show." So, yeah, I feel like podcasts have gotten a lot more popular now in the last three years since we did it, mm-hmm. and a lot of these people are just saying, "No, I'm not doing any of these podcasts." Yeah, it's well, and it's become so ubiquitous. Like everybody, there's a lot of podcasts out there now. You know, the the, the market's saturated, saturated right now in podcasts. Uh, yeah. I mean, um, it's like everybody, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Shaq, yeah, just people that like I hear like advertisements for that have podcasts. It's like, man, it's like Dog the Bounty Hunter has a podcast. It's like everybody has a podcast nowadays. It's just like. It's yeah, there's, I mean, I would, it's to the point now where like if, if we were, if we hadn't already established a show three years ago, or has it been three years? It's been three years, right? Yeah. 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 If we hadn't already established a show three years ago, I would not be doing this probably. I mean, I love doing it. And mm-hmm. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. But I would not try to enter the saturated market right now. Because I guarantee you, I love our listeners and we've got a lot of listeners for what I feel like we are. Just mm-hmm. a couple of idiots talking on the microphone. Right. But, and we've got a lot of listeners for that. Mm-hmm. We would not be anywhere near the listener count that we have now if we would start started now. Yeah, not just because we we're starting from scratch, but just because it's so saturated now. People got plenty of things to listen to. Mm-hmm. Most of the, however many listeners we have, I don't know what we're up to now, but most of them are people that have been with us pretty much from the start, and I, have just just stuck with us and just like us. And I think like. Honestly, I think our podcast started at a, like a peak moment and just a lot of things. Not just a peak moment in podcasting starting, but Facebook as well. I think now we're kind of, I think Facebook's peaked. We hit a good period of Facebook when people were still kind of getting out there and joining groups. Well, the groups thing for use as on our of podcasts, we were among the first people to do that. Right. And like most people were using pages at the time. And us and I think a couple of the other shows on the Retro Junkies, we were like, hey, let's try using groups. Yeah. And so we did, and it, it's really worked out great. Once we uh, – and I think all that's – I think we're going to see the downhill side. We're kind of on the downhill side of Facebook. I think Facebook's going to start getting a little less popular. I think we just hit kind of a peak moment. And it's going to be four years actually in January. So we started nice. January 2014. Yeah, you're so right, actually. 2018 will be our four years. So we're 118 episodes in. I don't think we're going to slow down any. Doesn't no plans. Like no plans. Keeping on. I mean, we're doing, uh, you know, there for a little while. We got a little, little rickety. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. We got a yeah. little rickety. But now we're pretty much on pace. We're doing episode every two weeks, no problem. Yeah. We used to do one, one a week. And that got a little too difficult, but yeah, yeah. So, um, yep, just moving right along. Uh, yep. So my list, okay, total of one, two. I, you like it when people count out loud? Yes. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve games. Mm-hmm. One seventeen ninety eight. So one hundred seventeen dollars ninety eight cents. I have two two pennies left. Uh, and I, genres, I would argue that I have one, two, three, four, five, six. 
I have about seven different genres in those 12 games. So like I said, I like a little bit of variety. Yeah, I like it. I like it. It's good, though. It's good. And you said you ended up with 116-something? 116-68 with 10 games. For a long time, I was just a hair over 118. And then after reconfiguring, got to 116, and that was just kind of like, I'm not getting any closer. So... (laughs) Well, we may revisit this again in uh, it'd be around two hundred episodes. It's maybe a good to- it's a good topic. I had a lot of fun doing it. This yeah. may not be a good episode. People may not want to listen to it because it may be boring. But as far as sitting down and doing this, it's pretty been pretty much fun. Yeah, I think it's good because it kind of there's going to be a lot of people that agree with some of our picks. There's going to be a lot of people that disagree with our picks. <laughs> there's going to be a lot of people that disagree with us, I think. Um, but, you know, that's part of it. This is what the podcast is about. We've done a lot of games that people hate, but somebody out there likes them. Um, maybe not uh, uh, Deadly Towers, but, yeah, you know. You know, this is kind of uh, a little bit like a Seinfeld clip show, I feel like. Yeah, it is. It is. Because Seinfeld did pretty good clip shows. I normally don't like clip shows, but Seinfeld did pretty good clip shows. Yeah. And so if this is like a recap show for us, this is a pretty good way to do it. Yeah, it is. Kind of review what we've done. And I don't like to toot my own horn, but... Toot toot. Yeah, here comes... Uh, the. Let's see, we've got to have some kind of like... Semi joyous, semi sad song to play out, you know. They always do that in like clip shows. Oh uh, yeah. So like, uh, like seasons of love, like five five hundred twenty five thousand. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, if I can find a Chip Tunes version of that, rent the rent song is that what? Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. If I can find a Chip Tunes version of that, that's what we'll, we'll exit to that. I think Seinfeld did uh, "Time of Your Life" by uh, well, that's not the name of the song. Green Day. Um, what's the name of the song? Good Riddance. Good Riddance. Yeah, yeah. That's the song they did. So if you can find that chip tunes, oh, I'm sure I can find that one. Yeah. Right. I'll see what I can do. Yeah, we're gonna have an intro song too, though. Oh, maybe, maybe Seasons of Love probably yeah. wouldn't be good for an intro. Song. <laughs> 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 so, anyway. although Seasons of Love, I can remember when we were in college. And this may be something I cut out for the uh, regular listening audience. This may be, you may get a little extra Patreon exclusive here, Patreon people. But I can remember us, every time we would get drunk in college, we would be singing that stupid yeah, 525,000 song. Well, I'll tell you why. Because WBR, local news station, Mm-hmm. Did it one year. It's like their their year end video, like commercial. It was like right around the second year of college too. When yeah, and we just you know. Also, I think Cliff hated it. And yes. so anything Cliff hated, you and I would just throw we it kept, in space all the we time. Kept, we had to go with it then. Yeah. I'm. T- I really don't understand why Cliff hung out with us because we we did not. Whenever, yeah. whenever you and I were together, we were just really mean to him. Kind of. Yeah. I feel bad he he shouldn't have hung out with not. Yeah. <laughs> he could hang out with each one of us individually and everything would be perfectly fine. But once you got us together, <laughs> it's like we turned on him. Yeah. Well, it's kind of, we kind of do that to a lot of people, I think. Yeah, that's true. Crab man. And slapper bags, too. And slapper yeah. bags, yeah. You're hanging out with slapper and bags. Carl. Yeah. Okay, so maybe we're, the, we're just really bad people. Maybe we're, the, <laughs> we're, we're, bad we're okay when people. we're separate, but once we get together, <laughs> we just start making fun of people. Yeah. So. Dude, Drew Backo. Oh man, poor, we, poor Drew. we even do it to our listeners. Drew had this awesome name planned out, and we just butchered it. <laughs> poor guy. Mm. Oh well. All right, all right, all right. Here yeah. comes here comes some music. Bah. Bah.
Thank you.